Hello and welcome. And this is the Hustle Over Everything podcast. Today, you know, it's a special day as usual. With every every guest that we have, it's a special day. So today, you know, we have uh, Chris, Chris Mitchell. Uh, as a Toronto blogger. Um, he covers a lot of travel blogs. He does a lot of blogging, uh, does a lot of traveling, been to 80 plus countries. And as you already heard, you know, Alex and, you know, Chris, they go way back from meeting at an event. So, you know, Al, you know, you guys are boys. Anything <laughs> you want to add to Chris's accolades that the audience can uh, can find out more about? Man, all right, where should I start? So, talk about Chris. Chris is a co-founder of uh, Ultimate Ontario and TO Bloggers. Um, mm-hmm. He also is a podcaster at Rick's Steve Over Brunch, um, a podcast covering the Rick's uh, takes on Europe show. It's um, really interesting, actually. It's like a travel-based uh, podcast. It's really cool. Um, Chris is like the definition of an online hustler. Um, he's built communities on Facebook and Instagram, and it really just has an interesting community in Ontario um, that focuses on travel. So we're just going to dive in um, into the business, what he's created over the last little while, and chop it up. Chop it up, man. Chris, welcome to the pod, man. Welcome to Hustle yeah. of Everything. You're Mr. Hustler. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, I'm going to have to live up to it now, right? I mean, uh, <laughs> it's a, it, was a, it was a good intro, right? Like if I fall flat, I mean, that's just going to be brutal. So I better live up to it. But, uh, you know, I'm excited to be here. Um, obviously, um, you know, I think we'll get into it. But a big part of what I try to do is to be unapologetic in, in sort of sharing what I know. And, and um, I think that, uh, you know, the more that we can get rid of this culture of guarding secrets uh, and the more about teaching each other um, these things so they're not secrets anymore. I mean, that's where you find success. Um, and I think that's why we, we clicked initially was that we were there coming from different angles, but interested in how we could help each other out, um, you know, on our, on our respective paths. So, yeah, excited to be here. Um, thanks for having me on. My pleasure. Our pleasure. Absolutely. You know, definitely. So I guess we could get started. Like, how did you get started into the travel business? Yeah, so I'm going to have to rewind it a little bit. Um, and But, you know, it'll help give some people some context on, on how it all kind of came together. But it really started, I actually did my third year of university uh, in at the University of Oslo in Norway. Um, Norway. In, in Norway, yeah. So I was over there and I ended up rooming with uh i lived in the old olympic villages there with six other people and one of the other guys was uh, was an american guy who i got along with really well and he had this blog that he was using to to sort of um basically ensuring that he didn't have to send out the same email to 100 different people he could just sort mm-hmm. of be like go to the site so you know i thought that like i'm all about efficiency so i was like well yeah this is a great way to be efficient I, you know i can just say hey everyone go check this out i was an english lit major so um, but, you know, I hadn't really written for anybody else except for professors, you know, who, who like to mark up your stuff with uh, red, you know, red ink galore. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I did well. I did well. But but uh, I think I thrived when I had that creative element and, and when I knew that the only person that was going to be judging my work was myself um, and, and, of course, their community online. But, um, yes, yeah, so but that kind of took took off. Uh, it ended up, you know, it was early days, 2000 late 2010 um and so like there was a, it was easy from an seo perspective i mean it was it was a gold mine um you know you're able to to get a lot of get a lot of keywords to to hit uh, without really trying too hard um and so that kind of built up i went back i finished uh, i finished university in canada here and then i took off with my girlfriend now wife actually um nice. to south, south korea to teach english Mm-hmm. So taught English there for for a year, but shortly after Korea. I got, in South Korea, yeah, and then uh, shortly after um, shortly after I, I landed there, I was out one night having drinking some soju, which is the like, the lethal, Korean beer. The, no, it's like the lethal Korean booze. Like it, it's twenty percent, but like it hits hard. It, it's a joyous, it's a joyous mm. beverage. Trust me. But the hangover. <laughs> yeah, I bet. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And anyways, yeah. we were out one night. And my friend was like, "Oh, you hear about this thing with the Korean government?" And I was like, "No, what?" And he's like, "It's this World Korea blogger thing. You can apply, and you know, basically, like they're looking for people to share stories from from the country." Uh, so I was, a, I apply, I was selected as a world Korea blogger. So I, I wrote essentially with and, and for the Korean government on my site for a year. Um, they were promoting on their channels that really helped. I got a certificate of appointment wow. from the minister of culture. 
like everything was looking good. <clears throat> then uh, I'll, I'll, don't worry, you can ask plenty of questions after this. But uh, mm -hmm. after um, moved back to Canada, I got another degree, a Bachelor of Education, moved with my wife to Istanbul. We taught there for three years, kept the blog going, kept the ideas flowing, kept on doing some interesting stuff. Uh, we moved back to Canada in late 2017. And now I've been here ever since. Uh, and that's when I formed the Toronto Bloggers Collective. I started the second website, uh, started a podcast, have another podcast in the works. Um, so once I was grounded back here, you know, I didn't know if it was being temporary or not, but now I have some businesses kind of connected to the city. And you know what, quite frankly, I spent so much time exploring the rest of the world that uh, I was kind of keen to see what we had, what makes the city special, you know, because mm -hmm. Toronto is unique. And it's, a, it's an amazing city, um, but I just didn't know where to look. So a lot of the, uh, the initial space are, are uh, initially coming back was just figuring out who do I need to connect with. And then it turns out, you know, as you guys will probably know, you know, once you open that door, it's like Pandora's box and there's interesting people everywhere. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden you're connecting with people and then you're on podcasts. So, mm -hmm. you know, that's what it's all about. So that's, that's the long story short. Um, I also got my master's in Istanbul as well uh, through, uh, through a, a correspondence program uh, with Buffalo state. So that came back locked and loaded with some degrees and then uh, proceeded to not necessarily use any of them. Um, but also, you know, <laughs> what, how, what, how long did it take you? What to, to get my master's or what? All, yeah. All of these degrees. Like, Seems like yeah. you did a lot of school. Like you're just yeah. Yeah, studying one year, the next year at a different like institution. What were you planning yeah. originally to do with all those degrees? I mean, I know the blogging thing wasn't in play, but you know, what yeah. were you looking to do at the time when you were getting your yeah, so, like two degrees and then the master's? Yeah. So, so, you know, I went into, I did four years an honors degree at Queens university, uh, you know, uh, and I did, um, I went into English Lit just because, uh, you know, I figured that it was never going to be uh, to my detriment to be a good communicator and to also be uh, somebody who looks at things subjectively and, and can take apart patterns from, you know, from things, you know, mm -hmm. you, something's presented in front of you and you can create a thesis out of anything and, and a theory and something to chase. So I went into that with just with no real goal, to be honest with you, other than to, you know, I, I understood immediately that, that the pressure that we feel to, to have a degree and to do this, that, and the other, it's mostly bullshit, to be honest with you. And it's all about finding a space in which you're interested. And, and uh, you know, for the most part, if you can wake up every day interested in what you're doing, you're, you're farther ahead than somebody who might have a practical, quote unquote, practical degree. Um, teaching to me seemed like my ticket to continue to travel wherever I wanted however I wanted. Um, so that's partially why I went into teaching. Um, and also I love, I love teaching education. Um, and then the, the, the masters, which is, uh, it's, it basically, it's in multidisciplinary studies, but mostly education. That's a correspondence opportunity I had to, to do over a three year period in Istanbul. Yeah. And again, for me, like, that's just about chasing, like chasing that idea of learning. I mean, literally before this call, I, I, uh, I saw that on Coursera, um, they had, uh, I think I literally have it up right now. Yeah. Coursera, they have a, a program that's offered by Yale to do with like happiness and meditation and stuff. It's mm -hmm. a 20 hour course. I'm going to take over the next 10 weeks. Like it's just about, you know, it's just about that mindset, right? Like I've probably done as much learning outside of school as I have in school, but it's yeah. about that, that mentality that, You're you know, we're never a finished project, you know? Yeah. 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 Um, that's really with you like traveling, like when did that passion for traveling start initially? Because, you know, school allowed you to travel a lot, but did it always have, did you always have that, that inkling to like see the world? And when did you realize that that was one thing that you really wanted to do and you're going to find any means to do that? Yeah, it's a good question. Um, and actually, you know, I have a, I think I have a good answer for you, but uh, it's it, it actually my dad uh, was saving up for this big family trip for us um, that we were going to take a train across Canada. And that's exactly what happened in, I think the year, I want to say 2000. I remember I was, you know, it was quite some time ago, but I was really young and um, the four of us hopped on a train from Toronto to Vancouver. And we were taking two weeks to get across there. And I remember we were on the, uh, I want to say the Rocky Mountaineer. That's the, the mm. name of the train. And I was up in the bubble car and I was looking at these mountains go by. And I just remember thinking like, man, like if my own country is this gorgeous, like what am I missing out on in the rest of the world? 
you know what I mean? Like I, I felt you. like I, I feel like I grew up in Toronto and then I saw these mountains all around me and I was like, man, like, Damn. like if, you know, I mean, of course I realized later Canada is uniquely beautiful actually as mm-hmm. well, but, but, you know, still like mm. I remember being blown away and uh, actually I went and did a, a little, a writing course when I was 16 at Trinity college in Dublin, Ireland. And then I was on my uh-huh. own on my own and I was going to pubs pretending I wasn't 16 for sure. And, mm. uh, and, you know, and enjoy well, that. Well, how did you make that happen? At, at, 16, at 16, man. In the island. How did you manage to make that happen? I found a course uh, that, that would give me my, I, uh, an English credit for, uh, for high school. Uh, and I, wow. and, and it was, and I, I knew it would take like, I think it was like six weeks in the summertime and just applied and went for it. I mean, that's, quite frankly, I mean, all of this sounds like a really cohesive narrative and really strategic, but really it was just throwing in applications in all sorts of different directions. And I remember, you know, when I went to go do my third year in Oslo, Norway, I had a good buddy and he was like, you know, Chris, like, what, what are you doing, man? Like, why are you going to Oslo, mm-hmm. Norway? Mm-hmm. And I was like, man, because you have to ask that question. <laughs> you have to be curious a little bit to like try and you know, be spontaneous sometimes and, you know, just venture out. You can't be doing the same things everyone's doing. And, you know, it's funny yeah, exactly. you say the whole thing about uh, seeing Canada. Like, I always like, you know, what my friends tell me they're traveling and they're like, oh, I'm leaving to go to Europe or whatever. I'm like, have you even seen your own backyard? You know, it feels like we're always chasing this whole thing that exists on the outside. Mm. Well, in our own land, there's something good to like look for. I mean, you can go to BC, you can go to the mountains like there's so many um saint newfoundland you know yeah. like Wherever, so many yeah. beautiful things you can see that will give you the same experience if you were to go to like a europe or something like that to be fair though there, there might not be the best marketing for these pro- like for the provinces you know I, it's harder to validate going to pei versus going to italy you know what i'm saying you know or, italy sounds sexy like, and all that like oh yeah, yeah I'm going to exactly. italy right but there's like a, cachet it's, behind it. there's no there's no culture behind canada like think about it like what is canadian culture but that's the question worth exploring though you know i think and i think there actually is a lot of culture if you get into you know it, it's kind of like this paradox right because part of canadian culture is the fact that we're always searching for culture so if you mm-hmm. read all these texts and novels it's like you know a lot of our most famous texts are people relating to their ancestry from Ireland or from whenever or whatever. But like, really, I had a professor in university that always used to say that, you know, you know, whereas the U.S. was a melting pot, you know, like you enter the country and then you're required to melt into the, into that aesthetic. You know, that Canada was much more of a cultural mosaic. Like you could come here and be whatever you were. But that's why Toronto is such an epic city, right? Because every neighborhood, you can be on a like you can go down to Chinatown and you can and you can hear people speaking Cantonese and Mandarin. You know, mm-hmm. you can go to little, you know, you can go down to the Danforth and like for a moment, you know, you're you're I don't know back in Santorini, you know, eating euros. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like that's a little Portugal too. Oh, sure, man. Yeah, Greek town, chicken, everything. The chicken in little Portugal is off off the hook. You know, it's oh, delicious. Man. Trust me, it's blessed. <laughs> <laughs> so you know you meeting your wife right like your girlfriend at the time like what did you guys meet so we actually met as we were tour guides um we were working for a company that led grade eight graduation trips uh for for students so we would leave, take them from toronto to ottawa toronto you know toronto to montreal my uh my wife free uh would uh, she worked with them for another season took them to new york so that's so we were actually leading what's called a tandem tour. So I had one bus and she had another, um, and uh, yeah, we just sort of hit it off, and um, and then we st- stayed in touch. And I mean, I think the big thing is like you you want to find a partner who uh, there's a lot of growing you guys can do together. You know, uh, believe me, you know, 19 year old Chris or 18 year old Chris, not a finished product. You know what I mean? Like yeah. a lot of learning to do, a lot of learning to do. It's very rough. Um, <laughs> Yeah, exactly. But at the same time, too, like, that's okay. Right? I mean, I still feel like there's a lot of learning to do, but you want to find a partner that challenges you to be your best. Um, mm-hmm. And I think that's what I found. So that it's still, I still feel that way, you know, um, even now, right? I mean, I think like, yeah, as we're recording this, there's a lot of stuff that's up in the air right now in travel, in, in everything that we're doing, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, uh, but you know what, like to have a, that stability of a partner who just like, just trust you no matter what, right? Like, just trust you to pivot, trust you to never stop. Like, I think that's, um, 
that's what you want. Somebody who understands who you are, you know, and I, 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 I don't have an off button, do you know what I mean? And, and she knows that. So that's, that it's great to have a partner who has sort of unlimited faith in you, you know? Absolutely. Yeah, that's amazing. Do you guys work together as well on the traveling Mitch? Yeah. It's just, she, she's got a, she's got her own sub brand, Miss Traveling Mitch on Instagram. Yeah. And uh, yeah. she writes for the site a fair bit, but you know, like a lot of the stuff we're doing, like I'll literally show you right here. We were on the cover of a magazine, Ultimate Ooh. Road Trip. And uh, like, tr trust me, I'm not getting on that magazine cover myself, right? Like, yeah. it's yeah. like it's about people love that story and that connection, Aesthetic. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah, a couple exactly. doing their own thing and like, oh yeah, that could be us. It's very aspirational. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. And the other thing too is like, you know, people can only relate to like, I'm, you know, I can only share one side of the story. You know, I, I think I'm pretty good at, at uh, thinking about how people would want to view things. But ultimately, I'm kind of like, if you follow my stuff, I'm, I think, you know, I try to educate, but I'm also goofy, I like to joke around and stuff like that. Like, if we're going to yeah. do a hotel or something like that, like a really gorgeous hotel, like, I'm not the guy that's going to take you on a five minute tour being like, and that's like, look at the fixtures in the bathroom, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But like, Bree's got a great eye for design. So she's showcasing the room in a way. And then I'm sharing it on my Instagram stories. And that way we can both tell the story. Mm -hmm. and we're hitting, uh, gosh, we're hitting yeah. a different audience. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's a she's got sense. a different voice than me, but like, obviously we, we were on the same page, right? It's just a different, uh, different, uh, yeah, just a different chapter, if you will, or, or just a different style of writing in the same book. You know, that's mm -hmm. kind of the way our brand works. Most definitely. Nice. So, yeah. You know, you talked about going to like the the blogger fest in Korea, correct? Oh, it was uh, it was actually a bloggers. It was like a bloggers collective. They selected thirty, you know, world Korea bloggers there. But I, but I, as far as like blogging, if, if your questions about blogging conferences, I've spoken at many of them and been to many of them. Mm -hmm. um, feel free to address any part of that. But yeah, um, if you have a question about blogging, like networking and conferences, let me know. For sure. Like, you know, like That's just getting into like traveling Mitch, right? Like when, when did that originally begin for you? And like, what sparked that idea to like, you know what, babe, like you go to your girl, you're like, you know, what, babe, like we're going to do this thing together. Yeah. Uh, you're going to be Miss Traveling Mitch and I'm going to be, you know, traveling Mitch. Right. And then yeah. Yeah, joining yeah. forces together. And then now you're on this journey together, you know, and then traveling the world together. I mean, how long did that start? And, you know, what are some crazy places you've been at? That you yeah covered. yeah man well like so so i, I kind of spoke about just briefly before that that traveling mitch brand that was the brand i started in 2010 and it just kind of grew throughout mm -hmm. the mis traveling mitch mm -hmm. stuff really only started after we moved back to toronto and it's so funny because when we or I moved back to toronto in 2017 and it's so funny because both of us were kind of kicking ourselves like why didn't we do something like this before you know oh, yeah. um now, yeah. now it seems so obvious you know what i mean but uh mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, as far as the stuff we've done together, I mean, we've been to probably over 55, 60 countries together. Um, you know, we've, we've been all over the place. I mean, this, some of the stories are ridiculous. I mean, I remember we were in uh, Tbilisi, Georgia, which is um, not terribly far from, from Russia. And, it's a, and we rented a car in winter and like everyone was like, you know, don't do it. It's, gonna, it's pretty hectic. The roads are pretty hectic. And we're like, no, nah, we got this, you know. <laughs> And man, the driving there was out of control. Like the GPS sent us off in the craziest route. We were like going over mountains into these like strange valleys with like, man, like hopping in, we hopping into towns with like, it was the most crazy, like bizarre experience. But I think the main thing is we've had plenty of those experiences, but it's just the understanding. Like, I, I think part of the thing is that because I, I know that I'm going to create content about it you know, the, I could be a little bit objective. So the, the lows and the, like the, the things that might make you freak out or go low or, or like not feel great about something. Like I always think uh -huh. of it as a future story. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like yeah, even, yeah. even in the moment when like things are hectic, like, you know, we, I always think about it as a story to be it's told. Positive. Later. Yeah. yeah. Like we, we took, mm -hmm. we took buses all over Vietnam and, and, you know, there were 20, 25 hour buses when I was studying in Oslo, I had an exam on the Monday and then the volcano went off in Iceland. And instead of flying oh, back, I had to take a eight country, 40 hour bus ride back to get back for my exam. Even during that, I knew like, these are things I'm going to be able to talk about later. Mm -hmm. you know, these are just future stories. Right. And uh, if you look at a lot of good travel, I mean, travel writing in a lot of ways, like it, there's a long, I mean, an amazing history there. But most of the people that are tapping into that now are just tapping into the trying to get 
you know, trying to get attention real quick uh, online and don't necessarily have the passion for it, but like, definitely I have the passion for it, um, for storytelling. And for sure, I always feel like um, sometimes when you get lost in a trip, it's actually a blessing in disguise, right? Because when you plan the trip, you know, you know, there's a set agenda that's set on the trip. But if you veer off course, you actually find a lot of things that you would not have discovered if you had not gotten lost. And those are like the true authentic moments that you actually look back in the trip and like, damn, like we actually did that. And it's because this, this, this happened, which was so unexpected, right? So that's yeah, great. Uh, yeah. I mean, that's, that's, but that's just a lesson. That's a metaphor for life, right? Like we can't mm-hmm. get too caught up on the destination, right? Most of the time, you know, it's the, you know, I don't know if you guys have ever read the book uh, by Phil Knight. Um, Shoe Dog? Called Shoe Dog, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So like, so in the last chapters, of, it was just a wicked book for anyone listening, by the way. But, uh, you know, the Bring last chapter. Shoe Dog? Shoe Dog by Phil Knight, yeah. So, right. so the last chapters, he's sort of like summarizing what he learned from building this Nike empire. The first thing you learn is, you know, that wasn't a clear trajectory. That wasn't going to be a shoe in success, right? No pun intended. But, mm-hmm. but, um, but um, he talks about uh, the notion afterwards that actually, like, it's not actually the success that he looks back upon fondly. It's the struggle. And the, and the process to get there like he looks back most fondly on the moments of the greatest uncertainty and when things were you know seemingly on the verge of collapse that's what he looks back on because he was so engaged you know like he mm. woke up every day uh he he needed ideas to to be able to keep the business going he needed mm. to take chances i just thought that was fascinating you know and i think that's the same for travel too like you got to give yourself room to realize that like you know the the best part of the trip or the story is not necessarily going to be when you enter the cathedral with 814 mm-hmm. other people which you wouldn't be doing right now but mm-hmm. you know um but uh it, it's often uh, it often is that bus ride where you meet a guy who grew up in your dad's small town and happens to have a bottle of whiskey in his bag you know what i mean mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> like that's uh, kind yeah, of yeah. you know and and uh but you know it's and it's all about outlook too right like if you you decide you're going to hate the bus ride, you know, you put your headphones on and you're miserable. Mm-hmm. Well, you're not going to notice the guy beside you who has the bottle of whiskey. <laughs> and back to Phil, man, like that guy, like I read the book as well. And he's like, a, and like he traveled a lot. And it's just crazy how back then he just graduated from, you know, high school. He got mm-hmm. his Stanford MBA. And then he's just like, you know what, guys, I'm going to go travel and just see the world. Yeah. And then he goes to Hawaii with his friend Carter and then exactly. Carter falls in love. They go go to China. And then when he got to China, that's when his business started, essentially, like with meeting with it. And he saw like the Tiger Asics uh, sneakers. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. it's just crazy how he always came back to China. And he speaks Chinese now, too, right? Uh, I think I think he speaks. In, I, I mean, I'm sure he speaks in a number of languages. Yeah. Um, but I mean, it, it, I agree with you. It was so interesting. I mean, obviously, it connected with me. And it's like he inherently understood that the travel was in and of itself education mm-hmm. you know and um and of course i also you know recognize fully that I, I i'm in a fortunate and privileged position to be able to go and travel you know there are people who have to take care of their parents there are people who have all sorts of situations or don't have that financial viability and um and, you know I, I can't say i ever came home with more than a couple hundred bucks in my bank account to be honest with you but at mm-hmm. the same time too the fact that i had the opportunity to even travel in the first place is a huge thing and probably the same for Phil for Phil Knight as well. But I, I, you know, I think about travel very much as like, um, I mean, it's, it's different now than when I first started traveling, to be honest with you, you can stay on the convey, you can stay on the conveyor belt and just never actually travel and just, you know, take your pictures in front of your sites and take your Instagram photos with your hand in your back and, you know, look all fancy, whatever. But I'm talking about, you know, real traveling, going to some different places. You're, you're, I think like my thing is, especially North Americans, like we need to go other places and be humbled. You know, I mean, that's a big problem in North America. Everyone, you know, a lot of, uh, a lot of people haven't even left the country and they, they feel like we're the best, you know, but it's like, how could you possibly know? You haven't even stepped foot anywhere else. Mm-hmm. I think you got to go and travel. You know, I have 80 reference points for any way that anybody's doing anything because I've been in 80 countries, you know, so I don't have to take anything and be like, like I can look at it objectively and be like, this is good thing or a bad thing, you know, because I have all these, all this ability to cross reference things. And I always say too, man, the Olympics are a hell of a lot more interesting. 
Mm. Chris, you're, you're essentially Mr. Worldwide right now. You know, you should take that away from Pitbull. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah, that was, I mean, that's the big aspiration, right? Challenge, challenge Pitbull. <laughs> exactly. Um, yeah. So, yo, let's start diving into like uh, the business aspect of it. You know, we've got gotten to know you now. Um, so one thing that I guess come as a revenue stream for you was being an influencer and working with the brands. What was your first brand deal? Well, that's a good question. I'm not even sure if I can even remember. I guess it, you know, would have been something like before there were even brand deals where somebody was reaching out to me on my website being like, like, I, I mean, I think it was something random. Like I was going on a stopover through, uh panama and like a tour company reached out to me and was like hey like we we like we saw on twitter instagram like you're gonna be in panama for 10 hours like can we pick you up from the airport and take you for a spin around and i was like yeah sure let's do it you know um oh, that's great so so and since then of course like i'm really careful about brand deals because I'm, I'm a strong believer in the fact that you, you you can always earn money but you can't earn back your integrity so I feel um, like, you know, I feel like a lot of people now are like, I don't know, doing deals with like Charmin and stuff like that. And like, hey, if you're a mom blogger and you got a bunch of kids and you use Charmin, man, shout out to the rooftops. But like, I'm not trying to, you know, I'm not trying to like be like, and you know, guys, I want to take a break from travel and just let you know that like, this is my preferred toilet paper. Like, it doesn't make sense for me, you know. <laughs> um, so you got to turn, you got to be really careful with that yeah. stuff. Most of my brand deals are up. Uh, our long-term things. I mean, for me now, it's a lot of tourism boards that I just work with nonstop. I represent regions, you know, um, I've worked with a number of organizations and companies I, I believe in and they keep coming back now, but I'm, I'm careful about that. Um, you know, as far as like, it, it's, I think at a certain point you realize that like all of it flows together, right? Like you have, I mean, I think, I think any, uh, I think it's smart. I try to have like, you know, if I can double digit, revenue streams coming in because that means that in a situation where everything comes to a grind or a halt, you know, I'm not necessarily uh, screwed, you know? And um, yeah. so I have, you know, I have the revenue streams from my website itself, from, you know, affiliate sales from booking.com, from Amazon, uh, from, you know, you can work with smaller companies. They're like, get your guide and things like that. These are, mm -hmm. for, these are travel blogger specific sort of things where you're, you know, you're offering, a recommendation you're getting something in return beyond that there's sponsor content too right uh, obviously some companies will reach out to you um i you know i remember like celebrity cruises or uh carnival reached out to me to do i just literally wrote an article in the top 10 islands in the caribbean and gave them a do follow link in there but of course i disclosed that you know you have to disclose that kind of stuff as a blogger so these, link, yeah yeah beyond that i mean like the opportunities are endless really um and you got to be creative with your partnerships um it can be you know i have freelance writing income um i do i speaking at speaking at conferences but all of this stuff lends itself to each other right because every chance i get to hop on a podcast or do whatever i'm always giving a shout out to all the things that i'm doing and and the thought is that you know one aspect of that's going to connect with somebody and they're going to want to investigate that a little more um you know like really i'm just i will entertain anything you know i have companies reaching out to me sometimes that are like hey we need to up our social media game can you come in for and run a two-hour workshop with our company and i'm like mm -hmm. i sure can if you can pay you know um mm -hmm. and that's what it's about is being an opportunist i mean the, another big thing obviously i run the toronto bloggers collective now we have over 500 members um all you have to be is a content creator in toronto with the blogging thing toronto content creators collective just sounds too i'm in that long yeah man so so we you know we're doing all kinds of stuff i mean even still right now like thursday we did a lot we're doing live video every thursday now we're talking about and we're doing next thursday is pinterest and then we're doing like launching ebooks and products like we're trying mm -hmm. to share that knowledge um but we also run you know paid workshops and paid events um you know another big thing is now like a lot of the clients that i work with that are tourism boards or whatever like now i'm sourcing press trips with content creators for those uh, tourism was so we're getting bigger and broader as you go along but you realize you know oftentimes it starts as a trickle and you just got to realize that you 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 know you want to separate that water flow into as many directions as you can you know it's not about having one strong river it's about having 10 flows you know mm -hmm. definitely definitely um man there's so much question i want to ask from that that was such a like yeah man, well, hit, hit, I, I mean I'm, a, I'm an open book with this stuff you feel free to like ask me yeah. how i developed any part of that but chris quickly okay. like um, Al, before you go, um, this is one thing I always want to know, you know, when brands approach you, what are they really looking for when they approach you to really decide to work with you? You know, um, is it the amount of followers you have? Because right now you can really fake 
like followers, right? 100%. And yeah. now it's even harder because you can't really check engagement because you know likes are hidden, um, comments. You can have yeah. the reach, but you know the IG algorithm it's pretty much it's it's not as strong as it was before. So, what were they really looking for early on to really decide? Hey, we're gonna really work with Chris Mitchell because we believe this, 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 and that. What what did they see in you that, and what do they see in bloggers that they decide to really hop in that boat with you and work with you? So I think a number of things. I mean, I think the first thing is professionalism. Um, you know, I think that uh, there's a number of people in this industry that they burn people, you know, they're mm-hmm. taking advantage of people. They're, it's a side gig and they're just not doing, they don't have an, an air of professionalism. So, you know, anybody who's trying to do with any level of, you know, authority should build themselves a strong media kit, you know, a media kit which shows, breaks down your stats, breaks down who you worked with. Um, I always send a customer feedback form to people I'm working with so that the last two pages of my media kit are just people being like, Chris is the best, you know? Um, Mm -hmm. And, you know, that goes a long way because what's, so what's the barrier to entry, right? Brands and companies want to make sure they can work with me and they're going to get a result, you know? So what do I do? I build out reports that show ROI. I, you know, if someone's hesitant to work with me, I send my media kit and then I send a sample campaign report, which shows, you know, that I give back in numbers on everything. Um, you know, the other thing too, is like, I speak at conferences a lot about brand authenticity and, you know, people are tired of, 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 of feeling like, like nobody wants to go on Twitter and see a scheduled post, you know, yeah. you can schedule your posts, but make sure they don't look scheduled, mm-hmm. you know? And I think, um, you know, for me, at least if you go on, follow me on Twitter or whatever, like you're going to see, I have big engagement, you know, um, it's not unusual for me to have, you know, 50 comments, hundred, 200 likes on a, on a good tweet, you know, it's, and, and that's, part of building community and showing you actually care about other people. Um, so I think, you know, if I'm, if I'm nailing down why I think people work with me again, I think it's, I think it's first the, the social proof, you know, I build out, I take the time, take a day and build out an epic report for yourself that showcases your own validity and send that off. Because the truth is whatever your report says, you know, and hopefully it says good things. Um, but the real thing is you're showcasing that you understand their problems. So if you're sending a report off and you're like, Hey, if you're wondering, you know, if you're hesitant to do a paid campaign here, let me show you what I've done for others. Even just that step shows them that you understand their pain points. Yeah. Right. Because their pain points are they've worked with somebody, they shelled out money, right? They took a gamble on somebody, that person burned them, their boss was like, so how did that go, by the way, and they had no ROI, right? They had no no ROI to show, right? They're like, I think it went well, mm-hmm. right? But you know, mm-hmm. we as creators have the ability to showcase statistics, showcase what we've done, you know, don't be lazy, take that day, two weeks later, or whatever, I always, I, I always send out, I basically say that I'll get a, you know, blog post live, if I'm going to you know, I worked with uh, the Czech Republic on a biking trip this year. So I went there, you know, I promised that on the ground, I'd be hitting all the social, uh, you know, with a vengeance that we're working together. We're tandeming that we're sharing content. We're going for it. Three weeks later, I had two articles up on my site as promised one month after that, I send a report with all my back end social stats, all the reports for the blogs and voila, check arrives. You know what I mean? And that's what it's all about. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know what, like figure out ways that you can do that. And like, you know, you, we're still defining what professional is in this, in this you know, space. Quote unquote profession, right? That's why I'm, you know, being the co-founder of the Toronto Bloggers Collective, now surely I have to lead by example, right? So that means mm-hmm. doing that. I mean, we just, I just created a 13 page report yesterday for a press trip that we did. We had 10 of our creators go and working with the tourism board. Um, and you know what, like we're using programs now to showcase how we're getting, you know, how we're doing and locking in hashtags and, you know, that I think Toronto bloggers call the hashtag for the two days we were running that trip had 2 million impressions on Twitter. I can show that objectively, you know what I mean? So nice. it's, it's about that kind of stuff. Take that, take that extra step. Um, Cause you'd be shocked, man. Like a hundred percent of people want the glory. 5% want to do the work. Yeah. Everybody 100%. wants to get like the, the deals, the brands. Oh, I have yeah. like, I'm an influencer, but I think everybody now, like no matter what kind of profile you have, whether it's an Instagram or YouTube or Twitter, essentially everybody's their own media company when you really think about 100%, 100%. it. 100%. 100%. And if you're really going to accept a check from someone, you need to treat yourself as an establishment. Like this is our business. These, these are like the numbers we create, which also brings another opportunity, right? Like, you know, a service like this to really coach people who are in the, in the space, what you're doing, I'm assuming with the bloggers community, mm-hmm. how to set yeah. up a business as an influencer, as a blogger, as like us podcasts. So, you know, we'll ask you after, Hey, how can we set up 
to really build hustle over everything into like a proper media business from a podcasting, you know, what are yeah, and the other thing for? The other thing too, is to realize like, you know, you take what you're, you know, take what you're, you're good at. So, you know, you guys are like, you know, you, if your podcast is your thing, right. You have to think about, so how can you share that message even further? Right. So, you know, yesterday, for example, or sorry, Thursday, for example, we had, uh, this live video going on talking about creating opportunities for yourself in difficult times and so on and so forth. You know, we're recording that media, which we're going to, you know, that's a live video that we have going live in our group. We'll use that audio on our podcast and we might, you know, try and get a sponsor to sponsor that segment of the podcast. Like the way that we can use media, you know, multi-purpose media now is incredible, right? So it's about thinking yeah. outside the box, getting your mm -hmm. message as far as you can, um, getting different, I mean, for you guys, I mean, you have a great opportunity to get different guests on who, have, who tap into different networks, you know, and, and get that notoriety for yourself. Um, but really, you know, the, the sky's the limit as far as, as creating that, that larger brand. Like for me, I just think to myself, I want to be seen as many places as possible. Right. So when two guys mm -hmm. like you seem like they're, they're interested in, in working hard and hustling, they're full of good ideas. And, uh, you know, I, I, I'm a strong believer that, you know, it, it's really success is not really a matter of circumstances, it's a matter of persistence, right? It's not mm -hmm. supposed to be some glorious journey that is so fun and fulfilling, right? Like some days it's about waking up and slugging it out when other people won't. Yeah. And I think that's what it was about. If I can sense that in somebody like, yeah, sure. Like I'll come on a podcast. I don't, I don't even ask about numbers. You know, if I sense that somebody is trying to do something interesting, I don't care who your audience is because somebody in your audience is going to listen to what I have to say and it's going to resonate with them. Then they check out my brand. They hop on my newsletter, which is a, you know, it's a 10 sequence sort of newsletter. I'm getting into, you know, like the podcasts are powerful because you're getting into people's ears. And this is not like, a, not like a creepy way, you know, it's just that quite frankly, I can do something on a podcast I can't do with my website. You can hear my voice right now. That's mm -hmm. turns out to be hugely meaningful. Um, and, and it's passive content too, right? Like I can be walking, doing a workout, working uh, exactly. on a project mm -hmm. and I'm hearing yeah. you and I'm hearing about your story and I'm like, actually like under no stress to consume your content and actually grow exactly. like, like what you're saying pretty much. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, the, and the other thing too, is, I mean, like, this is a, I think the big thing is people want consistency, right? So like I, I need to know that, uh, and this is a big thing in the, my space too, man. Sometimes you you see somebody on Instagram and they're like, they're like, I'm so grateful to be here for this sunset and whatever, you know. And then you meet them in person and they're miserable. And it's like, man, you gotta be like, if you're miserable, be you know, you know, be, be miserable. Ashed, well, yeah, be at the miserable traveler and be yeah. comical about it. You know what I mean? Yeah. But, you, yeah. but like, man, it's so much more effort to not be yourself. You gotta be, mm -hmm. you gotta be yourself unapologetically across all your channels. So mm -hmm. like somebody can go to my podcast, you know, which is like ridiculously niche. It's about a travel show with the American like travel producer. It's yeah, it's mm -hmm. whatever. It was but, niche, but I'll find it interesting. Sorry to cut you out, by the way. But no, I'm no, no, interesting no. about it. it is, this side anyone wants to check it out is that it is under the niche of a American traveler who goes to Europe, but it's almost like um, kind of like the view where they use a specific topic to talk about their aspect of travel when, exactly. they, when they when they experience or what they would do in that specific scenario. So it's yeah. quite interesting. I definitely suggest checking it out. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's cool. I mean, it's cool. It's literally like, so this Rick Steves Europe is the most famous travel show ever produced. And Rick Steves, mm -hmm. he's been on the show. He's like a very prolific traveler. He writes all the guidebooks and everything like that. And literally mm -hmm. we were, I was sitting one night in Sofia, Bulgaria with my friend having a beverage or two. And she was like, man, everyone's got a show like reviewing Walking Dead and reviewing Game of Thrones, or whatever. Wouldn't it be hilarious if we just reviewed Rick Steves Europe and and called it Rick Steves over brunch. So like talking about the show over brunch and we're like, yeah, I mean, I think we, we were close to like 75,000 uh, downloads now, you know, which is not nothing. Uh, maybe more know. now probably. But, uh, but the thing is that it's a new audience, right? So like the amount of time I have to put into that, not huge, but you know, I have, we have a Facebook group, Rick Steves over brunch podcast listeners with like 300 people or something that are like hyper engaged. You know, that's hugely valuable, man. My Facebook page, for traveling Mitch has maybe like 15, 16,000, but because it's a page and not a group, I don't get the engagement. Like groups are where it's at for, you know, engagement. engagement and also, I mean, um, I have a, a, 
a Facebook group too that I run with Bree called Travel Talk with Traveling Mitch. Um, and we have, you know, a couple hundred members there too, but like that's what it's all about. Spread it all around Some, so, so that somebody can find me over here and then all of a sudden they're connected to everything I'm doing, you know, mm-hmm. and everyone thinks I've cloned myself, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and those are your properties, you know, you own that and you can always use all those channels to drive back to the travelmitch.com or if there's ever, ever anything you want to leverage that for, you have all these streams to leverage. So it's really important. Yeah. One thing I want to talk about is that we, we always, everyone talks about building a community. I want to have a community, yeah. I want to have a platform, right? What are some of the day-to-day things you would do to maintain that platform and grow it efficiently? Yeah, so, I mean, that's a really good question. I think it's a million-dollar question. But I think the biggest thing is, you know, figure out what you have to offer um, and then also figure out what your, what your community has to offer, right? Um, I think, um, you know, for Travel Talk with Travel Image, like, we were able to be a voice we had to leave Mexico early because of this whole coronavirus stuff, you know, Mm -hmm. we were able to be a voice to, to, to talk about, you know, the challenges around that. And we just asked the community, you know, has anyone else had to cancel travel plans? And what does that feel like to you guys? I mean, Mm -hmm. quite honestly, man, I think the the number one thing with community is, is two pronged one, you know, what are you going to offer that somebody else can't find elsewhere? And two, you know, why, how are you going to show that you actually, you know, give a shit about the people in your group? Mm-hmm. You know, um, and that the, you can't fake that, you know, I mean, I think people are so people are have never been more desperate for authentic connection, you know, um, and if you can provide that, like, like, I think here's the thing, you know, for me, I know that if anybody goes from here, and they go on to Twitter, and they're following my tweets and all that kind of stuff, or they go on to Instagram, they're not going to be confused about the guy they find there, it's going to be the guy they heard here. So I think the main thing is like be consistent, but it doesn't have to be strategic consistency. It just has to be you, just you showing up over and over again and actually caring, offering value. You know, if I just went into my Facebook group, Travel Talk with Charlie Mitch, and I just posted an article of mine every day, it doesn't work. You got to understand that these people want to be heard too. So have a post and be like, you know what, like Brie tries to convince me to go to the beach all the time. It's not my thing, but you know what? Some of you guys might like it. Share a picture of a beach to try and convince me that I really got to give it a second chance. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Stuff like that, where it's like, I'm showing like, Hey, I'm just a human being who's like full of flaws and all this stuff, just like everyone else. Um, and I'm here to learn. And, you know, I respond back and I'm like, man, you know what, maybe I got to get my, you know, get myself down to wherever that beach is. And I'll be convinced that, uh, you know, whatever Grenada is like, that's the place I got to go. And then watch, you know, that that's a seed that's planted because if one year later I go to Grenada, that I'm keeping in mind who mentioned that to me. And I'm like, hey, if you guys remember, I said I was going to do it. And here I am, like, keep that thread mm-hmm. going. Um, when I think of community, I think about it like consistency and authenticity, um, some mixture of that. Uh, and also, what do you have to value? Like, what do you have? What do you, what do you have a value that's legitimately unique? Not like, like you it, nobody wants to be like generic motivation anymore. You know what I mean? Like, what is it about you? Everybody has that kernel in them. So what do you, what is it? What is it that you have to offer? Everybody has a story, right? It's, and Alex was even telling me this the other day. I was like, he was asking me, Hey, your sneaker deck thing. Cause I had a startup before sneaker deck. And I was like, people always ask me, Oh, how'd you build that when you had no idea how to do it? And I was like, ah, bro, like I'm tired of telling that story, but he's just like, no, man, like that is your story. Like there's, value in that and I never really saw that because when you look at yourself you're like ah you know what like it is a good story but other people find it valuable right so mm-hmm. it's so, it's good that you're saying that here as well too yeah, yeah. Dev, hold on. let me give context let me give context before you move on because uh, we're talking about going on other podcasts and, and uh this engaged with more people and I was like what, mm-hmm. what do I have to offer and I'm, I'm like this guy is devaluing himself because he went on pitch competitions as a pitch competition mm-hmm. and won and that's like super valuable content because people don't know. People don't go on mm-hmm. pitch contests and win. What does that entail, you know? And there's one money from it. So I'm like, this is valuable content. You know, you can never devalue your story, you know? On my end, um, I worked with several businesses and in, in ad, with ads and really grown businesses through um, advertising on Facebook or Instagram. So it's like, all right, where can I use that? Um, to give value to somebody else. You know, that's what the, mm. the whole thing is, is giving value. So Yeah, and, and just owning that narrative. And I think actually, you know, it's interesting you mentioned that, Owen, because I think everybody has that uh, that bone in them, you know, where they, they, ch- they, they question themselves and whatever. That's a good thing, man. You know, if you don't have that, mm-hmm. you're in trouble. It means you're a narcissist. 
you know? Yeah. Uh, and so the thing is, it turns out you can leverage that vulnerability, mm -hmm. you know, by being yeah. open about it and being like, hey, you know what? I started off not knowing what I was doing, but I do know what I'm doing now, you know? And, yeah. uh, and that's what it's all about. Like, I, I think, you know, there's a, there's a, there's a misnomer in the entrepreneurial community that you have to pretend to be this polished piece of, you know, marble, yeah. but it's like, actually yeah. people want to know how you chip the marble into that. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? It's funny you said that because that's why I like the hustle of everything uh, podcast started because uh, originally before Alex joined on, um, I always had this feeling like everybody who's a creative or who's an entrepreneur, whatever we see on the news, like it's always like projected as if everybody's always like a success, right? Oh, in, in tech, oh, they just closed like a $10 million series B round or whatever. Oh, Instagram gets started, gets sold like within 500 days. So it just became this glorified thing. Oh, I just started an IG account and I grew to 20K followers out of nowhere, right? So mm -hmm. we really wanted to do this because we really want to talk to people and tell them, hey, we're doing the Hustle Over Everything podcast because we really want to shine a light on the actual process on getting to there. Actually speaking truthfully about this is what we did. This is how we got there. And if you're listening, whoever's listening, who wants to do what you're doing, Chris, they can see how your path wasn't linear, right? It's mm -hmm. like you weren't yeah, teaching. You were, mm -hmm. you were in Oslo. You were traveling all over the world and you're just documenting that process and getting there you just fell in love with putting mm -hmm. in the work and actually creating something for yourself which you actually genuinely love it it probably doesn't feel like work for you because you know this is like what you love to do you love to travel so it's you know pretty much what you're saying is correct yeah no that's that's exactly it um you know what's the uh what's the old expression? It takes 10 years to become an overnight success. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I think that's what it is, but you know, we only get into trouble when people pretend like that's the case, right? That it just happens like that. But really, um, you know, for the most part, people will be, who get that, that success really quickly. Well, for the, for the you know, I, I think this, you know, if it seems too good to be true, it often is right. And, and, uh, and it turns out just, um, I just think just waking up every day and going to bed. I mean, that's probably what you're, you're going to realize, I think it's like I, there's other expressions too. Like you, you know, you'll you'll be shocked by how little you can do in a day, but how much you can do in a year. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. sort of thing. It's 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 it adds up over time. Um, there's a there's an old uh, ex, there's two expressions I'd like to to draw upon. One is no zero days, right? And it's the idea that you know you don't have to get up and be your best self every day, but you can't get up and do nothing. You know, and uh, and for me that means like some days I know I need a break, right? But it means that instead of waking up and doing some writing, which I know I can't do, I go out and go for a two hour walk and listen to two podcasts, which I know are going to get me ahead. And then I come back in the space I need to be in and maybe I don't go back to work, but like that's value in and of itself. So you're having no zero days. The other thing is the, the it's um, from a podcast called the Food Blogger Pro Podcast, which is really just about blogging and content creation. It just started off as Food Blogger uh, Pro, but um he has this concept of 1% infinity. So, you know, it's not about, um, it's not about deciding, Oh, I need to change my whole life around, uh, you know, and I'm going to go to the gym 16 times a day and read 48 books a week. You know what I mean? It's about just like one, you do, you get 1% better every single day. And, uh, and it turns out if you do that every single day on something, you, you end up pretty far ahead. But I think that's one thing I would communicate to everybody, you know, is like, it's a grind. Uh, I'm still learning every day and still trying to figure new things out. I expect one year from now that I'm going to be talking about five different things that I haven't yet created. You know, I have a bunch of stuff in the works, but that's what it's all about. Um, mm -hmm. And I think that's the main thing to realize for everybody here is like, um, you know, obviously I'm full of quotes and all this kind of stuff because I read feverishly, <laughs> but it's like the, you know, the, the, the best time to start was 10, 10 years ago. And the second best time to start is tomorrow. Mm, so that's it. Speak um, I was going to hop into your eBooks. So, oh, no, if you want to ask him, go ahead. Uh, yeah, I was going to ask him about like, you know, 10 years ago and 10 years today, you know, blogging uh, and creating content has definitely taken like, especially blogging, right? Like blogging wasn't as cool, let's no. say in 06, 07, just become, oh, like blogging is just like, you know, it's like, what, what are you blogging about, right? No one really took <laughs> them seriously. And then over time, like stuff like Medium and like having a WordPress page became better and easier to use. 
what do you see the future of blogging becoming like? Is it going to be tougher to really build a blog or do you feel like it's going to be easier because uh, people are not really going to look at these big establishments with you know, news yeah. sites. People are going to follow to like the micro people. Like what's your take on that? Yeah. So exactly what you said is hundred percent true. Um, you know, uh, I think uh, it's, it's never been easier to start a blog. It's never been harder to find success with one. Um, but the thing is that, uh, my big thing really is pretty simple. Actually, there are there is no more room for general blogs. So be niche. You mm-hmm. know, if you're going to start something, make sure it's crazy niche. Um, you know, that's the, that's the reason I leverage. I you know um, hedge my bets and started ultimateontario.com because it turns out there was a gap in Ontario travel content. My traveling niche site I started back in 2010, so I have I can use that as a, sort of a legacy brand to get you know lead workshops and and to do. Um, uh, like paid speaking gigs, et cetera. Like that's my use there. But mm-hmm. as far as starting another site where I can actually probably build that in down the line into something that's big for, you know, from an affiliate standpoint or from an ad network like Mediavine or whatever, um, that's where Ultimate Ontario comes in. But, so that's my big piece of advice for people is that, um, you know, the world is inundated with content. Um, so make sure what you're talking about is something uh, interesting and something you can write a lot about. Um, but it, as I said, Ultimate Ontario was it for me. I hadn't seen a good Ontario travel site necessarily. I mean, I have plenty of colleagues who do an amazing job of talking of talking about traveling around Ontario. But I mean, I started this with another blogger because it's just like that brand screams what I'm trying to communicate, which is that you can explore this province and it's worthwhile. So that's that's it. Mm-hmm. Underline, you know, uh, it's not going to be worth your time to start a general you know, travelingmitch.com probably not going to work if I started it tomorrow. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But it did work because I have enough content and leverage on there. My domain authority is high because I have a lot of content on there and a good SEO practices over, over a good period of time. But it's got to be niche um, and it's got to be something. And the other thing is too, it's got to be something you really care about. I mean, uh, I can't tell you the amount of people that start something new. They're excited about it for six weeks and then it's like kaputs, you know? You've got to make sure it's, yeah, yeah exactly. You know, it, it's got to be, Anybody can start a project. It's about who finishes it. <laughs> yeah, honestly, all the times on, on social media, all I hear is just start, just start your podcast or just start your, and it's honestly not about the start. It's about staying at it. That's yeah. the hard part. Yeah. Most definitely. And people think it's easy to like, even like starting a podcast, it's actually hard to really hard. sustain. It. It's hard because hard. It's sustain it. Yeah. It's sustain it because you got to edit it all the time. You got to like listen to it and it takes, you mm-hmm. have to sit there and listen to it. Then you got to like, you know, plan the guests. You got to like grow your audience. It's like, it's another, it's, it's a monster. It just mm-hmm. looks like when you're listening, oh, all I got to do is just like invite <laughs> a guy like uh, Chris and we just chop it up. But like, they don't know that, you know, we had to prepare questions. We had to yeah. you know, get do together, research, do research. Source your, source your guests. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Edit afterwards. Edit promote afterwards, it. Promote it. Build it up. Then mm-hmm. come back again and do it again. Right. And every yeah, time. Every time. <laughs> And people are not built for that. They're not built for the grind. And before you see any money. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Um, one thing that like, corporations, why they're not a thousand podcasts in the market is because there's no money in the start. Mm-hmm. It's, it's impossible to convince a corporation, hey, invest money in my podcast or in this podcast with no money, no advertisers, no nothing. And yeah, it'll be a thing in a year. Mm-hmm. But just, just trust us. <laughs> you know, this is extremely hard to do. They're just seeing um, a loss, like in the in the balance sheet. They're like, oh yeah, like we we're why? this is a liability. It's costing us this mm-hmm. for months and months and months until we actually see our ROI on it. Right, and that's where you guys come in. You create a badass little ROI report. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Man. Um. You know, so. One thing I want to dip into, um, pivot a bit, is like one thing you started mentioned earlier was your ebooks, right? Mm-hmm. Um, or ebook, I think you just started your first. Yeah, I just have, I just have one right now. Yeah. Walk us through that process because I'm actually working on mine, and I could definitely use some person by some being greedy here, you know. But um, yeah, let, let's let's chat it up. Yeah. So um, I started the ebook just as an authority bid. Um, you know, I wanted to be able to uh, start it off speaking at workshops or you know be speaking in front of people and say hey, I'm Chris Mitchell I'm a, a travel content creator and uh, you know I'm the co-founder of the Toronto Bloggers Collective and I'm the author of a local travel writer's guide to Toronto however mm. books succeed right now we still inherently from a society perspective place a lot of um, 
we validate people who are authors. Who are authors, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's so that's that, that's a that's a power play on my point. The other thing too, actually, is that I I had it as a uh, a life goal that I wanted to be you know an author and of course i've written like you know a million words on my website but uh you still don't get you know credit for being an author for that so i wanted yeah, yeah. so i wrote an 100 page book helping people discover uh, toronto i wanted to be an authority on toronto um i think it does a good job of it i tried to keep it simple where i'm giving my recommendations and then i run through the from 50 to 1 the sites that you should check out in toronto and run through you know hours and all that kind of stuff and all the nitty gritty details you know, the process was uh, was way more work than I thought it was going to be. I mean, I got to be totally honest with you. It was a tremendous amount of work. Um, uh, but, you know, I, I ended up selling it directly off my site afterwards and had good sales. Um, you know, it's part of my uh, email marketing scheme now. I think the fourth and the seventh email address my ebook and people can buy it who are subscribers. That's something that's running always in the background. So these are things that uh, that... That, that you know, I think I'm very happy I, I wrote it for sure. Also, to prove myself, I could. If I could have done it over again, I probably would have focused more on releasing it on Amazon for a week for free, building, uh, getting some traction on that, and getting up the charts because that's a big factor. Um, uh, but instead, I instead I released it on my site through my newsletter. I had some good yeah. sales for especially for the first couple of months. But uh, I I imagine at this point, like kind of you know six eight. 10 months later, the real sales would be if I had done it for free on, uh, on, on Amazon uh, at the beginning. However, mm-hmm. I'm, you know, I'm going to experiment with uh, Facebook ads and selling it off there. You know, if I can get, uh, if I can acquire people for less than the price of my ebook, I sell my ebook for $7.99 US, uh, USD. If, um, if I can acquire people for for less than that and they'll buy the book. I just got to figure that out, you know, whether that's worth it for me. You know, I always, I have a big notebook of, of, of ideas that I'm working through and I prioritize them high, medium, low priorities. So I know, you know, I, ha- I have that in my high priority list. That's something I'm, I'm dealing with. The other thing too is, you know, if I decide that I want to pull it off and not sell it, I can use that for leverage to get new subscribers. You know, you sign up for my newsletter, you get my an ebook. That's always going to be yeah. something valuable. Um, mm-hmm. I just feel like whenever you put a certain amount of time into something and you have the product finished, um, there's a certain, you can leverage that however you want. And also personally, I mean, um, nobody can take that away from me. You know what I mean? That, that I, uh, that uh, I sat in my office, I grinded through it. I edited it, I, you know, I got it designed. It's something I can send off. Uh, and then the authority piece as well. Right. So that's, that's my thing. I like. I think if you're going to create a product, there are ways that you can definitely, you know, make some some monetize that well. But there are also factors at play of that creating an ebook. It, it just firstly just shows it proves to yourself that you can. Like I'm not scared to write an 150 page book now, uh, or a 200 page book. Like, the idea. I know that process. You know, I've, mm. I've climbed that mountain, right? So now I know that. So they, you can't take that away from anybody either. Um, and again, it's like that. It's like that thing that if you say you're the author of a book, people know that you are competent. You know that that no matter what, whatever, whatever. It takes a smart mind to write a book. Yeah. Well, I'm saying like the thing yeah. is, even yeah. if you're even if you're like at a conference, you've had one too many glasses of wine, you're a little belligerent. They're like, well, you know what, like. I trust this guy. He's an author. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, you hit a nail on the head. You know, you could have a blog that has 10 million words that's multi-platinum in, yeah, exactly. Exactly. in page exactly. views that, or, or one book that has 10,000 readers. And in, in society, the perception is still st- like yeah. way more towards mm. the book. One, so one book, right? Yeah. And I think it's also your, yeah, it's the prestige. It's also your audience too. Like I have a bit of a, for one reason or another, I think it's because I, um, like I was an English lit major and I'm kind of like, I go on tangents. And I'm a little verbose on my site. Like my, my like average age is like older, uh, considerably older than me. Um, okay. And so I think like they resonated, they were, interested by the process i was vulnerable about talking about the process with with, with my readership and yeah. on social so everyone knew i was working my tail off on this book and i was sharing my progress with them so when it was released uh-huh. it wasn't like oh chris wrote an ebook it was like man i'm proud of chris you know because they were all along for the ride with me mm-hmm. you know yeah. and that's and that's what i meant before when i was talking about leveraging vulnerability got you you know what i mean you. like got by the time you. it was released people wanted to buy it to support me for the journey that they knew i went through and how hard yeah, it was yeah. 
Got you, got you. Um, how long did it, was this process? Well, I want to say like, probably I started in January and I, it was like fully done in July, maybe June. So 20, uh, was, January, 2019 to yeah, July, yeah. 2019. Exactly. Yeah. So it wasn't, okay. it wasn't too, too, too long, but at the same time too, I couldn't work on it nonstop. Um, the, it was like, I worked at a really heavy in the first month and really heavy in the last month, but man, I was sick of it by the last month. I was like, I was like, I'm done with this, but, uh, but you know, I hit the, I wanted to hit three digits. That was my thing. So I hit a hundred pages. Um, and then I, you know, I felt like no matter what, nobody's going to take that away from me. So that was it, yeah. you know? Um, yeah, but man, it was, it was a serious process. Like, mm -hmm. You know, but there's other things you can do. Like, if you don't want to write a hundred-page book uh, and you want to start a newsletter, create a, uh, I don't know, create a, like a cheat like sheet. You guys, you create yeah, create a one pager on the top, uh, the top apps for product to, to help you hustle. You know what I mean? Yeah, and have yeah. a one pager with 10, 10 apps and give that away for free, and then that's your intro newsletter. And then the first reaction people have of you arriving in their in their in their inbox is these people provide value you yeah, know yeah. so yeah. like that's my thing man if you're going to be doing email marketing you better be providing value because you know no time has never been uh as essential know, more, more at threat man so mm -hmm. so if you're going to be in someone's inbox that's a personal space you better be providing value hey your sixth email maybe you pitch what you're really getting at uh you know to to have sell that product or whatever but you better have established value before that Got you, got you, got, got you. Got you. And that was really useful, man. Thank you. No worries. Um, man. Yeah, that's one thing I'm actually, that's what I'm actually looking to create is like a one pager or like a two pager on um, the Facebook ad process because it's so much. It's such much of a beast to really drill down how to properly market on Facebook. So that's yeah. what I mean. Like you should like you that you have a great opportunity to you're doing something unique and you're doing it well. You know that's that's the one thing too, right? Like you can have your brand and then you can have your like I do, I have my brand, which showcases my skills and talents and something. And then you'd be shocked how many people reach out to me on LinkedIn or whatever. And like, Hey, like you don't buy any chance. Like you wouldn't hop on a call or whatever. And I'm like, Oh, it's funny. you ask. Cause like, of course I already have a whole system around that, you know? Mm -hmm. And, uh, and then businesses in Toronto too, right? Like they're, you know, I, I can legitimately say, you know, I'm going to come in there and two hours later, I guarantee you, you're going to be in a different place about considering how you're going to market yourself. But this is it. You have that opportunity as well, right? You have that opportunity to say, this is what I really kick ass with, you know, and this is what I can share. Of course, you probably don't want to share every single secret, which makes you, you know, uniquely qualified, but you can share why someone would be wise to place their faith in you. That's what we're actually thinking of doing. Uh, we're building out a newsletter um, similar to like something that like we, we're gonna, we want to do it daily but uh, we want to do it weekly. And it's just sharing, building a community of hustlers, right? People who are doing yeah. freelance, who are doing like maybe a Shopify store, they're doing e-commerce, whatever you want to do. It's just these micro entrepreneurs, they might not be like the, the titans of like the industry, but they're just people who are just trying to get ahead. Uh, they might have a nine to five, but they're doing something. So what would you say for us to do to really build like that audience as a, as a media company so much like what other companies like such as Morning Brew, uh, mm -hmm. the Girls, hustle. The hustle, hustle, Girls Night in Club, uh, Daily Peanut. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. What would you say from like a content creator perspective on how to really grow an audience? Well, first and foremost, uh, if you're able to create professional looking emails, if you have 12 people on your email list, um, they're not going to know it, right? So first and foremost, start writing like you have 100,000 people on your list, you know, and uh and talk, you know, you, you might have, as I said, like I, if I sign up for your email list and everything looks professional and everything looks good, I might file you under another morning brew, right? So don't discount yourself based on the numbers that I can't see. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, you know, speak like you're an authority right off the bat, speak like you're a morning brew, the hustle, speak like you have something to offer, make sure your emails look professional, make sure you're not wasting my time, you know, all of these things. And, uh, and, and, and show a unique ability to, to, to monitor what's going on and provide value. Um, there are a number of techniques you can use, like the moment you get that up and running, 
then you start to reference that left, right, and center on your podcast, right? It's the first thing you say, you know, thank you so much for being here with the House of Everything podcast, you know, uh, or at the end you say, you know, uh, if you're loving what we're saying, you know, we drop knowledge left, right, and center. And the best way to do that is to go to hustleoverthing.com slash newsletter and we got you covered. You know what I mean? Like you put it left, right, and center, you get people in. The thing is, once you get people in a newsletter, um, they're they're on your, I think about that's when they get on the track, right? And you you just got to build a sweet train. So mm-hmm. make sure people don't want to get off the next station. They want to stay on indefinitely. That's how nice the train is. It's first class, right? So that's it. it. Really speak like you're already there. Be professional. Make sure your emails look crisp uh, and fresh. Also, you know, I, I'm developing another newsletter actually as we speak. Uh, I'm not even going to get into the topic yet because I don't want someone to steal the idea. But, uh, <laughs> but you know, that's launching and that's heavily in the works. And that's kind of the way we're thinking about it. First, we're going to leverage all the communities we, we have. All the communities that already know that we know what we're talking about, we're going to go there. And we figure we can get 200 people kind of in the first day or two just mm-hmm. off that. And then you figure out a figure out a reason for people to refer. Uh, I think Morning Brew, they do. Uh, you have access to all of the emails. And if you refer three people, you get access to their Saturday emails. Mm-hmm. Right? So like that's how they keep it rolling. The hustle is a similar thing, similar thing. So figure out your referral program. The other thing too, is once you build out your newsletter to a certain uh, level, then you can start to, uh, you know, add one section for sponsored content and, and figure out what that price point looks like. Um, you know, at the beginning, you know, like if, at the beginning, it might look like, uh, I'm not even sure what, what, what you would want to associate yourself with, but it might, could even be a mic, you know, mic company for your podcast. You know what I mean? And uh, whatever, like you just figure out how you can get some sponsorship in there. Um, but uh, I think it's a fine line, right? Cause like you don't, you want to move forward with humility, but uh, with something like a newsletter, it's all about the belief in authority. So you can start off with swagger because I don't know what you know. Mm-hmm. Got you, got you. Um, one thing that's uh, switching gears a bit um, that I want to talk about is a bit of the elephant in the room, uh, COVID-19, you know, um, yeah. with that yeah. being the titan that's kind of rocked both our industries, yeah. you know, um, what have you been thinking about? I don't want to, I guess, say like, what are you doing? Because it's such a, such a like, dramatic thing. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah no, can... but how are you thinking to pivot now um, in such a crazy time? Yeah. So first and foremost, I mean, that's not something I'm scared to talk about as, as a leader in the space with Toronto blogs, collecting everything like that. Like we, it's just a reality right now. I mean, travel content, yeah. you're not going to, you're not going to get that. I think my site traffic is down like 75%, right? Um, uh, obviously there's revenue sources I'm counting on from there. Um, the thing is I'm kind of diversified enough that, so like now we're going heavy on the Toronto blogs collective. Um, instead of, we used to have four weekly threads, none of it live. Now we have every Thursday, we have a live workshop. Um, every Saturday night, we have a happy hour. You know, we're doing different things to really leverage that community with the idea of keeping that alive and growing that. Um, I'm also starting a whole bunch of new projects. I've got more space to think, less people emailing me and bothering me. You know, I'm starting a project I was just working on before this on my grandfather's war letters. Uh, I'm starting a podcast to contextualize Canada's role in World War II. Um, I have another uh, podcast I'm launching with uh, with another um, travel content creator, but it's actually about uh, anxiety and like both her and I have some like I have like the ADHD like hyper like you know overthinking things kind of anxiety, and she's kind of got the like depressive like tired anxiety kind of going on. We were just talking like normalizing some of those conversations around. Uh, it's called, it will be called I'm Anxious About, and each week's a different topic. And we're starting off being vulnerable, like starting off, like uh, the first episode is going to be I'm st- uh, I'm Anxious About dot, 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 starting a podcast. We're going to talk about the process there, right? All of these different things, like I think it's important to realize that like, whatever your business is, whatever you're doing, um, you know, you, everyone's multifaceted. So what am I doing right like now? I'm, I'm doing, I've probably never been busier with all the stuff I'm doing. Um, I'm on calls left, right, and center. I'm working on this newsletter I was talking about, which we're going to release. And uh, I'm preparing for when the, and when the skies open up, they're going to open up big. Like, I know, I already have a number of people wait who are like, Chris, just like, you know, we got you. We got you in mind. We just got to wait for the green light again. So mm-hmm. I'm, I'm confident about that. Um, you leverage your relationships. Um, I think there's a lot of people looking to me right now because they know that I'm in the same position they are and they want to see how I, you know, deal with it. And to me, it looks like this, you know, hopping on podcasts, sharing knowledge. Here's the thing, man. Like 
everything is in flux right now. But I, as I told you before, like I don't, I'm not interested in a, a calm flight. You know, I, I'm fine with turbulence because you figure out what kind of character you have. And uh, you know, I firmly believe that uh, it's possible of five years from now that the things that I create in the next three months could be what I'm known for. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. The next podcast I launch, the next stuff I'm working on, like it's possible five years from now that that everyone, all these other things I'm talking about, all the things I've already built, um, you know, maybe the maybe the thing I'm working on right now is the thing that uh, you know I'm known for. I mean, I, I got to say I'm pretty grateful. Like I was supposed to be on CBC two two mornings ago, right after Trudeau, to talk about to rep representing f f freelancers. But I, oh. but that felt, but that felt, that fell through last Damn. minute because I was, I was going to talk about, <laughs> I was going to talk about how there had been no specific information to help freelancers, uh, you know, move forward, uh, and we needed information. And then, then of course, Bill Morneau goes on. He's like, he's like, no matter what, you'll get two thousand dollars for the first four months, even if you're an Uber driver. My question was answered, and I couldn't go on. So I'm figuring out, <laughs> I'm figuring, I'm figuring out how to go back on. But I'm saying like, this is the time where you like. Yeah, sure. You know what? I can go and be like, woe is me or whatever. But the truth is, man, I got a supportive partner. I have some savings and, uh, and I've got like nonstop energy and ideas. Um, I, I, I feel like the truth is that I, I'm empathetic to the people who are, you know, single parents right now are working at a grocery store. They're worried about yeah. catching this, this disease and they have to mm -hmm. come home and, uh, and try and live a normal life there. So, you know, on the, mm -hmm. on the one hand, this is a huge curveball. Uh, but you know, on the other hand, um, you know, I know that so many people are getting thrown this curveball right now. I, you know, if I didn't become the leader of this community to step up right now and show what everybody can do and keep things positive, keep things moving, you know, then why did I do it? Right. So mm. now that's, that's the way I feel. I feel like uh, I have a really unique opportunity to be a voice uh, to keep people, run, you know, moving forward through this. And that is the elephant in the room of all of this, you know, and that you can't help but talk about it. But uh, again, like you're, you're either the type of person who, you know, you see a challenge and you try and rise to it or you crumble under it. And I would not, you know, chastise anybody if they, if they were feeling down or a little depressed right now, but you know what, like uh, nobody, like you're never going to have a better chance to chase the things that everybody else might be like, you're doing what, you know, because you got space right now. Um, and people are curious, start something, do something, mm -hmm. add your name to something. Um, you know, imagine if your resume years from now, it's like all this, all of this stuff started right now for you. I mean, how impressed do you think an employer is going to be being like, man, I was, I was just, you know, watching whatever. Uh, yeah, I, was watching, I was on Netflix. I finished every season of everything ever on Netflix yeah. and, you're just, and, and you took the chance to reflect. I mean, for me, man, this is a mental refresh. Right. It's not one I wanted. Mm -hmm. My computer crashed. You know what I mean? But I'm rebooting like crazy. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm excited about it, man. I mean, you can't fake that. Uh, yeah. As I said, it's hectic. But, uh, as, you know, that's the belief that you got to have in yourself is that five years from now, um, the thing that you create next could be the thing. Yeah. It's actually even like back in the 08, 09 crash. That's when like all like the most iconic unicorn companies started, like Airbnb, Uber, yeah. uh, WhatsApp, Slack uh all these like instagram i believe even then started around that time right so moments like this is actually the best time to actually create like when we're going in a recession there's like a pandemic yeah. it's actually doubled down on that because everyone's locked down right now everyone's on yeah. their phones you can create something and everybody's gonna just be scrolling refreshing they want to see something so why yeah, not just put I your mean, idea out there and the power of like thing. man yeah like the power of like man when you when you like it's a really powerful feeling to have nothing left to lose. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, you know, when like, when you like, what, what's the, you do a cost benefit analysis right now, everything looks pretty good, you know, <laughs> most definitely. Yeah. like, yeah. like my, I, uh, I had a friend who was like, who was like, she's like, we're starting this podcast together and she's excited about it. Cause she's like, man, like my time right now has like negative value. Like I'm just not doing anything with it. So like, e e like, even if it's, this doesn't do anything. Like at least my brain's engaged. I'm, I'm getting things moving again. You have a reason to get up in the morning. You, you know, you have a reason to, to shower, you know, and uh, you know, throw a little gel in the hair or whatever you're doing. You know what I mean? Like you, you got to find those reasons. So have a purpose. Yeah, man, exactly. So, and that's, and that's like, the, like you don't have to know exactly what you're going to try and do, but try some stuff out. you like, 
I don't know. My, I have a good buddy who's just like at home painting stuff right now. Sure. You know what I mean? Why not? Mm-hmm. Whatever. Right. So that's it. I think that that's, yeah. Like you were talking about, man, all these unicorn companies, all these great ideas, like some people see catastrophe and some people see opportunity and that's no disrespect to anybody. There are some people who have been dealt a horrible hand right now. And I mean, no disrespect yeah. to because, because right now, there's a whole bunch of people who totally deserve to be in survival mode and focusing on that and taking care of their families. And it's a really difficult position. Um, but you know, I'm in a position where, uh, I don't have kids yet. I have a little, a little space to think uh, here and, uh, and, you know, I'm, I'm trying to think about how I can help others right now. You know, I, I'll tell you last night, like we had this little happy hour. Where we all hopped on, had a, you know, had a, had a drink or two together. We were on there for like two hours. You could see, man, everyone needed that. Everyone needed that social that hour that's yeah. social yeah mm-hmm. exactly so like what i guess my thing is right now like what can i do to make everyone else's lives better that still help me you know mm-hmm. that kind yeah. of stuff so, so chris we're close to wrapping it up and like you know like one thing to like leave the episode is like you know while we want to know is like where you know you have a lot of projects going on you have a lot of things that you're tapping yourself into but mm-hmm. overall like what's your vision moving forward for let's say the next five years, like where do you want your travel blog to be? Where do you see your podcast? What kind of figure do you want to be seen in the content space? Yeah. Yeah. It's a good question. So first and foremost, I mean, I want to continue to be, to be strong with these, with my two websites that I have so far, um, be consistent with content and be seen as a resource in both those spaces. Um, for sure, like it, on social media, I think I, I have great engagement. I want to keep that up. I want to keep being authentic on there. I want people to, as I said, I want, you know, I want people to be able to, to see me online and meet the same person. Um, as far as larger goals, I mean, the Toronto Blogs Collective, I think is a big key to that. Um, we got over 500 members now. We're growing pretty rapidly. Um, and we're kind of positing ourselves more as a PR firm than, uh, than anything else as far as, you know, creating those connections between brands and tourism boards and stuff. And, and with the idea of providing paid opportunities for our members, um, but uh, also, you know, as a PR company, we're getting paid to source that, that, the right people for, for those opportunities. I think that's a real opportunity for us um, and paid workshops that are legitimately providing value. Um, you know, beyond that, I mean, like, I feel like, um, I feel like there's probably gonna be an opportunity, like whether it's I podcasting and being in front of a camera, these are things I really enjoy. Um, I'd love to be seen like as a go-to person on CBC for freelancers or for, for content creators. Um, I'm really trying to put myself in a leadership position and I feel like uh, I've put in the work, uh, you know, I feel like if, if you look at my track record, I've, I've sort of been on the go since I was 16. So I've got a lot of experience. I, you know, I feel older than my years um, and I feel like I have a lot to offer other people. Uh, and that would be the, the, the kind of the final string of that is making sure that, um, that my goals aren't self-centered, that uh, there's a lot of empathy there. There's a lot of focus on giving back. Um, you know, I feel like people understand when, like we, you know, with the Toronto Vlogs Collective, like my goal isn't to make that into a big money maker. It's to, it's to, it's to bring money into the group and start getting people paid and get paid myself, you know? And so I think that's, that's it, man. Like is, uh, those are all the things. I mean, I might, I'll probably write a, you know, a book down the line. I think this project around my grandpa's war letters is going to be something really interesting. And mm-hmm. I'm aiming to release that on Remembrance Day of this year. Um, you know, I'm about, I have it on my board to keep myself in check. I'm 25 letters into the first box of letters. Um, and so, you know, I'm, let's say like 7% done the letters now. Mm-hmm. Um, so, uh, you know, I got a lot of work to do on that. Uh, I guess, uh, you know, just looking forward five years, 10 years, whatever, I think that it's just that common belief that like, I'm, you know, I'm reading 60, 70 books a year. I'm putting in work every day with the idea that uh, maybe the best is yet to come. Um, Maybe not, but you know what, like being prepared for that is never a bad idea. So these are all things I'm working on uh, and also never being scared to start something new. Like I, I find, I don't know about you guys, but like, I find like, it, it, I seem if I have a lot of things on the go and I'm juggling a lot of different things, I, I, I managed to make my hands go quicker. Um, and this is the joy I get in life, man. Like I, I don't, I'm not somebody who needs a ton of, I need a lot of exercise. Like I'm like a hamster like that. I, I got to hop on the wheel a fair bit. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, I yeah, got yeah. I, I to gotta, I gotta <laughs> burn off some of that energy. Like sometimes I just come home and 
you know, breathe. My wife's just like, you gotta go to the gym right now. Like you're too hyped up. You know? like, <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, all right, all right, I'm out of here. Yeah, but, yeah. but, uh, but leveraging that and, um, and starting and, and, and starting new things that are, that are meaningful. You know, that's the big thing. Meaningful. Like I don't, I'm not the guy that's going to do things strictly for financial gain, but um, mm-hmm. that's how you get a following. I think is when people understand that your goals uh, are, are maybe aiding their goals as well. Sounds good, man. Well, Chris, thank you for coming on. Uh, it's definitely like great to hear about your story, your journey, and what you're building on. Uh, you know, where can people find you? Uh, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, they probably already got a good picture, but um, yeah, for sure, uh, travelingmitch.com. It's with one L. Uh, it was just like a branding thing. I was mostly, mm-hmm. I was, I'd been drinking Norway one night and I was with a bunch of American guys, and I was like, I'm going to go all small case in one, like one L long anyways but uh traveling mitch uh at traveling mitch on twitter on instagram ultimate ontario.com at ultimate ontario if you want to get to know brie and i intimately travel talk with traveling mitch mm-hmm. uh we've also got an ultimate ontario facebook group you can hop on my newsletter if you're mm-hmm. a creator or a content creator toronto bloggers collective literally all you need to do is be in the city and be creating interesting stuff um i think you'll find the engagements off the charts there um our, that group is, is 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 a powerful engine that uh, you're welcome to join mm-hmm. man if you want to explore uh, toronto when we're able to again local travel writers guide to toronto got you on there you can find it on my site and if you want to listen to me on podcast rick steves over brunch the podcast and i'll have a couple more out um so you know yeah a lot of different stuff on the go a lot of different stuff um, man yeah but the thing is man like the real thing is like if you want to like just connect with me on social for sure i mean if you respond to me on twitter you're trying to hook up with me on twitter like you'll you'll find it's me there i'm running it um that's a good place to that's the hub of it all and uh yeah man uh, if you want to follow my wife too on instagram is traveling mitch but um yeah i mean the, the good news is man like one year from now like that segment's gonna be like one minute longer and that feels good <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah we'll we'll get you to email us and then we'll put those uh all in the show notes after yeah no yeah. worries well yeah obviously appreciate the, the chance to be on here and you know for everybody on here uh, i'm not sure you know when you're gonna to to get this out but um you know for anyone who's struggling right now just uh just keep putting in work every day that's all any of us can do um and you know i'm not i'm not coming at this from somebody who feels like they've found success i'm coming at this from somebody who is prioritizing trying to be successful. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, there's a difference there. You know, you can be an authority while maintaining humility. And and hopefully that's what came across in this, uh, in this talk. And, you know, obviously I respect uh, your, your hustle, both you guys and uh, wish you guys the best on the podcast for sure. I'll, you know, give you a shout out on my channels when this goes live and uh, I appreciate any and all opportunities and and wish everyone listening and you guys uh, all the best. Thank you. Appreciate that. Yeah. Thank you. Well, uh, you know, yeah, yeah. Yeah, right, you got say? yeah. Yeah, sure. Um, this is some housekeeping items, you know, um, make sure to follow us as well. 24 seven hustler on Instagram. Um, our newsletter, you can sign up, um, for our, for when our first of gets live at hustle over everything.co, not.com, not.ca.co. Um, and own us and day on Instagram as well. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, I think that's it. Oh, and mine. Yeah, you too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See, I, I, I said I got self-serving proof of them. I'm not selfless. I'm selfless. Yes. Um, yeah. Elevated <laughs> so Alexander. Um, self-selfless, yes. Uh, Elevated Alexander on Instagram. And yeah, I think that's it. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's time to shout out uh, Hustler Nation Al. So here we go, man. You know, we just had Chris Mitchell on the podcast, you know, Traveling Mitch. And uh, dropped a lot of gems, a lot of quotable stuff. You know, we're going to put it into micro content and uh, put it out there for you guys to see. But, you know, as he said, it's a great time to create right now. It's a great time to be bold and have the courage to put yourself out there. You know, you're not going outside. You don't got to go to work. You're indoors the whole time. So let's just build something. If it's a newsletter, he gave you a lot of tips starting a newsletter. If it's podcasts, podcast go start it out, but just stay consistent. I think that's one of the things that we came out of this. It's anything is possible as long as you stay consistent. So consistency is the name of the content game. I uh, wouldn't you agree, Chris? 100%. Yeah, 100%. Be consistent and uh, content's king still. Exactly. So this is the Hustle Over Everything podcast. I'm Owen Osende. I'm Alexander. And we out, man. Cheers. Cheers.